I can see. I don't know what Skype is doing. Hold on. I'm going to press an X button and I'm not sure what's going to happen. All right. Ready? Okay. <laughs> okay. Nothing happened. Johnny, good. Oh, oh up, up in the top right, you, you, you're talking about press X to close something, a dialogue. No, there was the. Um, I had two of you for no reason whatsoever. Like, I want one of you. Like two of you. Oh, well, it's okay if you get two. It's okay. You've only got to, you've only got to speak to one of the, one of me. You just ignore the other one. Doesn't matter if there's two there. That's rude. I don't. No, like... I don't mind. But what if he minds? No, he won't mind because he's me. You know, it's it's, to, it's totally fine. What if he builds it's his not... own consciousness? No, no, that won't happen. I'm enough consciousness for one person, mate. That alone too. So no, that's that's not going to be a thing, <laughs> you know. No, oh. it's totally fine. It's totally fine. If, it, if there's two of me ever, you just all you got to do is talk to one of me. That's absolutely fine. Well, okay, I'll be I'll be pick and choose next time which one I talk yeah, to. just pick and choose. Right? If I see your eyes sort of going left and right, left and right, looking at different versions of me, it's absolutely fine, mate. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. I think I have a problem. Like I can see doubles and all that. You should probably get that checked out. <laughs> yeah, I blame Skype. Oh, okay. Well, it, it's, if it's my... not definitely not a medical condition. If it's not that, you know, it's you, not, your brain's screwed. It's not a medical condition. Oh, I'm good. Turning, turning off notifications on my watch. See, I already, I'm so badass. Oh, I just went to sleep according to my watch. Yeah, I'm so badass. I have like do not disturb on every device and I automatically puts on my phone, on my Mac. Yeah. Amazing. Because we live in a world of distractions. Well, yes, to a point. Yes. No. I, yes. I you've got to be no. If, no, I think you've got to be strong willed. Sometimes that's not enough. What if someone's exploiting a loophole in a brain that just goes we get you addicted to it? Your biology is going to take over. There's literally nothing you can do about it. I don't know. I, I don't subscribe to that. I subscribe to the fact that you're a free thinker. Or oh, most humans are. I've met some people that aren't. Um, you know, you're a free thinker. You can, you know, when you should be looking at something when you shouldn't. I mean, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I don't subscribe to that. Mate. I think if you, if your time is taken up by looking at things when you should be doing other things, you, you need to go slap. You should be a therapist. You generally should go <laughs> to a therapy yeah. place. Well, yeah. Oh, I, well, who knows? Maybe I am a therapist, mate. You know. Which one? Because there's two. Oh, the one on the left. Ah, uh, yeah. He does look more like a therapist. He didn't okay. threaten to slap anyone. Yeah, no. Can you imagine though? Someone goes to a therapy. In fact, next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone walks in. Have a quick slap. Four hundred quid. Thanks very much. <laughs> Everything's fine. Next. That's yeah. Thanks. Yeah, well, I, I, I can understand people getting confused. Not confused. That's the wrong word. I can understand people getting um, so their att attention being grabbed by something else. But you know, I think a lot of it. Yes, okay. Phones are addictive. But you've got a brain in your head. Put it down. What about urges and things that are out of your control, like? They are purely biologically driven urges. Give you example. can just go, huh? Give an example. Um, not phones, not technology. You said biological. Yeah, so let's say you're thirsty, right? Right. There's a limit to how long you can go, I'm not going to drink, I'm strong will. I'm not going to drink, I'm strong will. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's not strong will, though, is it? You need to drink to survive. Yeah, example. but that's what I mean. The way that the weakness in our brain are exploited, like gambling, for example, it's no different to, you know, like you need that. Your brain is hooked and you need that. That's why I really have a problem with like things that grab our um, awareness because it's not the matter of, oh, I'm going to say no to phones, right? But no. The whole thing has been designed to grab our attention from the moment you touch it to, you know, onwards, really. It's not really yeah. that. Like some people, let's say, like, for example, me and my friends used to smoke when we used to drink, right? It was a thing where it was a social activity, uh, at least for me, 
And, you know, the best chats were first in the kitchen and then the balcony when he was smoking. But then at some point in my life, I kind of realized that basically I had slapped from life when I went on a treadmill after a week of partying in, in, in like well, during Christmas. I can't like, I can feel my lungs start just burning. I hate that. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what, sorry, I'm not going to do it ever again. And I didn't do it for like a long, long ass time. Like I had a, a smoke like recently when I see my mate, but I regretted it straight away. I had like eight years of like, nothing and some of my friends don't understand how can i do it because to me it was just a matter of i'm gonna not do it and i understand that's how you see it like you have a brain and you go i'm not gonna do it right but then i struggle with games when i was younger because adhd plus games especially online competitive stuff equals you hooked like for hours and to me, it was out of my control. Like I genuinely felt like I'm not driving. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the fact that to me, it was easy to say no to cigarettes because I wasn't addicted at all. I was an hook on nicotine, but it was impossible for me to say no to games is the equivalent of someone being addicted or drawn to things that distract them. And they can't say no to it because they're not driving. Ultimately, it's not them in a driver's seat. Yeah, I think to a point, I've got a very addictive personality. I smoked for 16 years and then decided one day I was going to give up, put them down and never never pick them back up. You know, I've got a very, as I said, a very addictive personality. Um, but when I decide enough's enough, whether it be my phone, whether it be smoking, whether it be drinking, whether it be gambling, whether it be playing music, whatever, yeah. then I just think enough's enough, I turn it off. So I, maybe... I, I, I may be one of those small percentage of people who can, because I know a lot of my mates struggle with everything. Um, but yeah, I just thought, I mean. I've always thought to myself, there isn't a, there isn't an excuse. Just stop doing it. I hate people that say, oh, I wish I could stop doing this. I had a, I had yeah. a very, very nice drug addiction for years, six years. And again, with that, um, I more or less just stopped. I went back to it twice. Um, but I did again, I just stopped. Went Maybe hellish there is, Yeah, but there is a, a percentage of population that ju just can do that. Yeah. Like, we're not immune to everything. And, you know, same with, like, drugs for ADHD. There is seven... There is three main types and two subtypes that you use. Yeah. And the first two... So the first one works on 40% of population. The other one works on 40% of population. And that leaves you 20% that just going to bounce off the walls trying to find the thing that's going to work for them. And I think it's exactly the same, that we're all different. And I think you're just a lucky, very lucky person to be able to say no. And you just, you know, you're just able to say no. And you go, done. And you're not doing it because for most people the feeling is you're not in a driver's seat mm. it's like someone's driving and you're just there by standing like watching from the back seat and there's literally nothing you can do which is a horrible feeling because then you're not in control of your own life there's a reason why people you know when people spiral out of control and they just like hit the low points and mm. there's many reasons to it but there is a group of people that they reach their low points because they're not in control of their own life. You know, they will sell things that they need to survive in order to oh, fill the gap. I mean, yeah, I think we're blurring lines here, though, aren't we? We're blurring lines from um, addictive personalities to struggling to survive. Yeah, no, I think the example of struggling to survive is that, you know, people are not in control and they reach the point where they reach you get rid of the goods and everything because they need to get that craving fulfilled. And they it's impossible for them biologically to go say no, because that requires extra chemicals in their body to help them going through that. So um, I think you're very lucky with that, to be fair, because um, I'm trying to avoid saying impossible is nothing because that's a trademark. Um, I, th I think, to be honest, I think I've learned it. I wasn't like that when I was younger. 
I think I've learned to, as yeah. I've got older, I think it's sort of something that I've learned to do because I've had to do it. The thing I can't do it with, I can't do it with work. I can't do it with work. I will work myself into an early grave if I, if I get the opportunity and I won't realise I'm doing it. Why? I, I get, um, I get very, what's the word? I get very into what I'm doing. So, you know, since I left work the 12th of November, so I've been setting up a couple of companies, a couple of businesses. I've got a, um, a, a new one that I've start, started up as a 3D printing manufacturing business. Um, and awesome. I'm working 16, 17 hours a day, uh, hour days. Um, but I don't, you know, Hello. that's something that, that's different. That's enjoyable. You're setting everything up. This is, you know. Um, yeah, that's different kind of work. It, yeah, I suppose it is. I suppose, it is. you know, I mean, if you take last month I was employed, I would work over my hours repeatedly and I think a certain percentage of it was expected but there is also a larger perspective where I'm sitting still at my desk at 8pm after starting work at half past seven in the morning you know an hour and a half before I meant to and then two 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 to three hours after I'm meant to finish I'm still That's working how is it no no it's not um but it's Can something you just again not stop and just say enough is enough I find it very difficult to work. I've, I've always found it very difficult to work because there's always something, isn't there? It's, it's, it's very different. It's not like I'm not going to have a cigarette because I've just had one in, in 10 minutes ago or I'm not going to have another drink because actually I've had three and it's only 4 p.m. You know, it's, it's not like that. It's a case of, right, I've done that. Hang on, what's coming tomorrow? Tomorrow I've got two, I've got to have two one-to-ones. I've got to do this, do that. Do you know what I mean? There's always something. So I'm thinking, yeah. well, what I'll do is to save me working late on a Friday night, I'll get everything done on a Tuesday or Wednesday but then I end up working late Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. <laughs> you know, that's isn't, sort of a... Isn't doing the same thing all over again a uh, sign of insanity? According well, I am. To... I am. That's fine. I'm just making sure. Yeah, that, I am. Yeah. I, I, I have doctor's letters a lot. <laughs> so I'm, I'm officially there, so yeah, I'm, I'm jealous of your note because uh, I don't have a note to, you know, say that. Oh, don't be um, jealous, because I got um, my abs- I got my mind morning, noon, and night, mate. <laughs> but it's interesting, right? Because like people struggle with phones, people struggle with like sex yeah. addiction, drug addictions, and you're there like it's a different like a bait and switch for everyone else. Yeah, I never, I never. It's funny, I never found myself being too addicted to drugs. I never found myself being too addicted to nicotine. I found yeah. the withdrawals from drugs fucking awful um, and lasted for days on end. Um, nicotine. What do we nicotine? I, I, I don't know. I, I was more compelled to have a cigarette than a habit. Yeah. But when I decided to quit, well, I was working with you when I, when yeah. I decided to quit. Um, I think I'd been there about four or five years. And was I it that day when I deleted uh, 36 gigabytes of mailboxes and you were going home and uh, I said that, are you busy? Do you have a few hours? And you're like, what? I could have throttled you. I absolutely could have throttled you. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no it wasn't that. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm going to ask. Are you busy? What have you done? <laughs> Nothing. But hypothetically... <laughs> oh, that no, it was in the old office, I think, before we moved to the new one. It was in the old office, I believe. In, in, uh, oh, no, 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 it wasn't. It was in the new office. Yeah, it was opposite the Bath College, you know? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It was in the yeah. new office. I went went to um, your little corner when Alex was going home and you were going home and I stopped. Yeah, no, both, I, I remember when both. you deleted everything because you caused me days of headache. <laughs> yeah, because there's no tapes and... I would, they were there at the end, but the problem was that I kind of helped everyone because I was like, well, you didn't test it properly. You're lucky I did it, no customer. Yeah, you, can call it whatever, you can say whatever you want. The fact of the matter is you deleted something that shouldn't have been deleted. And then I deleted something through the thing that shouldn't have been there in the first place. So I went to the dev team and I was like, you need to test this because you can't just put it out there. And they were all like, you shouldn't have touched it. I'm like, why is it there in the first place? And everyone's like, sided with me. Like, what, what, hold on. Like, he found a problem. The problem caused everyone a lot of headaches. He's not a bad guy here. He did everyone a favor finding the problem. 
because that's how I work now. This is not, but I remember because <laughs> that's how that's how good companies work. But where we worked, um, yeah. well, I'm not going to talk about the company, but I'll talk about you and say that you were in the wrong when you bloody deleted all that shit. Yeah, but I couldn't. I couldn't physically. Like, if I would go somewhere where I was not supposed to go, fine. But if I was playing in sight in a place that everyone can go and that shouldn't be there, I don't think I'm at fault there. <laughs> I, I, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't remember and I don't want to remember uh, just everything about reason, that. I but I, I do remember having to restore for weeks later all yeah. the stuff that you had deleted. And yeah. I remember the headache it caused me. So you, however you want to come to terms with yourself, you the only answer you're going to get from me is you were in the wrong. That's the only answer no, you're going to get from me came to time times. after time after time again. No, if something's yeah. not meant to be there, it's not meant to be restored. But it was, it had to be restored, so therefore it had to be there. So yeah, you, but what the you thing deleted, that deleted it was not supposed to be there. You can't just put a delete button on the front page. And say, oh yeah, the links are dead. That's fine. <laughs> Clearly, <it> wasn't. <laughs> so yeah, like I, I came to terms with it. Like it was quite funny though. I laughed because I was like, right, I'm going to the gym. See ya. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, came back from the gym. Such a headache. Yeah, yeah, I had a, Yeah, it was heavy leg day session. I remember that. I enjoyed the leg session. I literally forgot about work the moment I stepped out of the office because. You need to ban boundaries, you need to balance in that as well. It's different when you're on call. Yeah, of course. You see, because you don't get away from work. Work is there to a point. Yeah, but then isn't that in your remit to create those boundaries where, like, I'm not saying chill out when you're on call, but, like, on call is still work mode, right? But when you're not on call, there is relax mode like there's nothing wrong with doing more than you're supposed to be doing work-wise right there's nothing wrong with that problem starts when that's all you do yes but it does depend on a lot of variables when you're on call when you're the the senior engineer on call because you're reliant on people underneath you knowing their jobs you're reliant on people being trained properly you're reliant on systems working and being fixed and patched properly you're reliant on so many variables that aren't in your immediate control that uh, it gets to the point where people ring you up and ask you questions when on call should only be used for system critical issues. And it gets to the point, like with myself, when I was on call for seven years, and it gets to the point where you are literally on pins for getting that phone call. So you don't sleep, then you're tired for work, then you're tired from call after work and you don't sleep that night because you're thinking about about your phone ringing. Cut to the point that I, you know, obviously I left my job that I was working in, which is different to the job that we're talking about. But um, I left that place and I wasn't meant to be on call, but I was still being called to the point where now I can't have, there's no devices in the house, iPads, phones, anything, which have got notification sounds on. All devices are silent. I can't stand the thought, or I can't stand the sound, rather, not the thought, the sound of any notification going off, because it literally, it, it sends a chill down my spine. Yeah, and it's fair. I learned the hard way in one work that having personal and private, so personal and work phone on one device is a no-go. Oh, no, that's a massive no-go. Oh, yeah. God, you're asking for trouble there. Absolutely, mate. How did you yeah. learn, though? Uh, I got the job where I had a <laughs> work phone that I made work and private phone at the same time, and the work would never stop. Yeah. yeah. But then I quickly realized that, so um, I got another phone, and I quickly started to log off. Like, you know, don't get me wrong, I like working as well, but it's important to take time to relax. Like, as as hard as you work, you don't work eight hours and then relax for eight hours. No. But why not? Like, if you work hard eight hours, why don't you take equal time to relax, right? And this is the problem with the system right now. You don't have that time. No. You sleep eight hours, you work eight hours, that's 16 hours. Well, you're going to 
relax for eight hours? What about food, shopping, responsibilities, pay bills, go cook food, like see your friends like this? So many things you need to do. It's a bad system. It's flawed. Because mm. Norway. Is it, is it Denmark that work four days a week? Denmark, yes. Denmark yeah. has four days ha- a week. happiest country in the world. Yeah. And uh, that worked very well. Yeah. Why would not you? Why wouldn't you work four days a week? I'd want to. Yeah. I'd want to. I, I did do an apple for a long while. I worked uh, four days a week. Um, longer days, slightly, just to make up for having the Good Friday off. Friday. But I was off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and it was tremendous. It was absolutely yeah. amazing. It worked so well. I still got the same amount of money as you'd get for working five days, but I got more rest, more sleep, more me time, as you were just saying. And you know what? It was bloody wonderful. I think from a a, a work-life balance perspective, that has definitely got to be the best company that I've ever worked for from a work-life balance. Absolutely. Were you you in a genius bar or something like that? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, And it it was great. I I really enjoyed that aspect of it. There were lots more that weren't great that I'm not going to talk about, but the... (laughs) The, the work-life balance was was phenomenal yeah yeah really good but that's what we forget like nowadays you know people say hassle and chase that dollar and stuff like that i'm like and then end, end up being in a grave at 40. <laughs> yeah like someone yeah. said to me do you want to be the richest person in the graveyard and i was like that weirdly can't take really you with you, mate. You yeah can't take like, you with you. <laughs> that really weirdly hit yeah. home deep deep you know so then I was like, hmm, okay, that's that's actually a good point. So as much as I love, like, I really enjoy working for my company right now, and I enjoy people I work with, and I enjoy the projects I do. They are fully aware that as much as I enjoy doing that, they also know that I'm a human, and I can easily drive myself to the ground if I don't take time to recover. So yeah, I'm quite lucky, but, you know, going back with my memory to all the beautiful places I happen to charm with my presence. <laughs> Some of them were a proper adventure. How did I survive those things? I'm like, how did I manage to like survive without like a big scratch on my psyche? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Which is I like the four day a week uh, work, four day work week. It, it makes sense. I mean, you 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 know, for everything that I've said in this conversation, you don't want to take it. You don't want work to take over everything. You know, no. it's it's very well. If you're making, I'm not going to divulge how much I was making, but my last job, I was making a lot, and it's nice. It's great. Yes, I'm not going to knock it. Not at all. But the stress that comes along with it is ridiculous to the point where as i as i mentioned wasn't sleeping wasn't eating right you know trying to hold down a a a fitness regime doesn't go down well trying to recover from long covid doesn't go well you know um to the point where i would much rather be doing something that i want to do for a, a modest amount of money just to make sure that i can get by and pay my bills rather than have too much money. I mean, you know, I, I've blurred, if you're watching this in the video, I've blurred the, the screen. This this office, I can't ask for anything more materially. Materially? Material-wise. <laughs> I mean, if really? you would, I'm going to coin that. Um, you know, but at the same time, did it make me happy? Did any of it? No, you know, because I didn't have, t- I didn't have time <laughs> to use the stuff that I bought because I was working. Yeah. Um, I think my perspective since having the horrible start to 2021 that I had, um, I think my perspective has 100% altered. I would much rather, you know, do something for myself that I enjoyed and earn a modest wage rather than, because there's so much more about life that I have not experienced, you know, and really want to. but literally, I was falling into the, I was falling into the same rut that a lot of people fall into, because they feel as if they need they, they feel as if they have to. Because I studied in college IT and mechanical engineering. Well, I haven't done anything with mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering was my love. IT was a fallback plan, but it ended up going the other way around. <laughs> 
and my unfortunately being a little bit big headed i'm good at it but i don't enjoy it and after 20 years of doing it i think to myself i want to do what i loved which is mechanical engineering um and i don't know if you can see or you can't because i blew it up but i've i've actually fixed my big 3d printer behind me the big industrial thing and i've got two more here and i've got one underneath me here and i've got a nice little production line going and i've uh, very recently in the past week yeah what it be thursday 16th of december yeah a week um no not even a week <laughs> It was Saturday last. Oh, God, I don't know where the hell I am. Um, I was talking to a mate of mine. I went to Birmingham, Jakob. I went to, I actually travelled, mate. I travelled. I can't believe it. I actually travelled. Massive milestone. Um, went to Birmingham uh, the middle of December to meet up with a couple of mates. And um, we had a, we were talking, as you do. And one of my mates turned around and said, um, why didn't you sell some of your 3D models that you make? So I thought, yeah, do you know, that's a good idea. So I, I put all my models, all the STLs and stuff up on Thingiverse. I've had them up there for, since 2019. And I went back to have a look at how many times they've been viewed. They've been viewed over 4,000 times, my models. I've only got six up there, over 4,000 nice. times. And they've been downloaded almost 2,000 times. So I was thinking, hang on, there seems to be a bit of a looks like there might be a bit of a, a thing for this so i i i've well in the throes of starting up a uh, a 3d printing company where oh, um i'm modeling a load nice. of stuff and printing off a load of stuff for people who want to buy it and i've already had three sales and i haven't officially properly started yet <laughs> that's awesome what what models then because lots of things so i'll give you some examples things like and these are all my own designs so money boxes waste paper baskets bird feeders bird tables bird houses um bowls uh bowls for fruit bowls for pop uh pop pu awesome. pony. how do you say that pop pop pu 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 oh god for that phone cases uh tablet cases uh tablet stands there we are there's something here i'm going to show you this this is a, a prototype right but this year you can't really see it very well because it's blurred. This is a headphone. It's a dual headphone um, holder. holder. So there's a pair of headphones on the headphone holder. Apart from the only thing is this is for wireless, cordless phones. And I've also got another one which you can't see, which is over in the back, which is a much larger one for wired. Um, awesome. Uh, guitar picks, loads of guitar picks because obviously I play. So I, I, I print up my own guitar picks, save buying them. Um Oh, God, the list goes on. Google Home, Google Nest holders, different different holders to put on the wall. Oh, I holders can, can I in... buy one? I want yeah. to purchase the Google because I have Google Home Mini. Google Nest, they've rebranded. Yeah, one of these. Hang on. I've got like one. A... Excuse my squeaky chair. I've got one right here. Oh, no, no, you can't. One of those. <laughs> yes. One of those. Yeah. 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 So I want to, because um, it's at the moment, it's the very barbaric, barbaric way, because it's in the cupboard. <laughs> so oh. when the alarm goes off and you try to speak to it, ah, no, you have to get up, open the cupboard door, door, shout, shout at it, because it. it's already annoyed as hell. And oh, then just, no. Yeah, so we thought about, you know, we're going to put a shelf, but then like putting a shelf to have a Google Mini on top of that, yeah that's a bit silly so if you have anything like that i'll be very yeah. keen to check it out i also have a new car and i was like in the, Ooh, they, the, a beamer oh you haven't have you yeah oh, so God. m140i 360 horsepower really that puppy goes it's ridiculous <laughs> it's ridiculous every excuse where we go me and my girlfriend i'm like i'll drive <laughs> i'll take that <laughs> it's my be. car yeah, every time now, I'll be whatever it is. Do you need a lift? <laughs> yeah, I'm just going down to Tesco. Do you need a lift, though? No, it's two minutes walking. Lift? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm truly in love with it. Um, It's spectacular. Um, oh, It's the best car I've ever owned. And yeah. hopefully it's not going to finish there. Because there's a chance if I take the traction control off, I'll wrap it around a tree. So I'm yeah, being safe. I'm to say very boring. I was just about to say, you know, make sure you t look after yourself and others and don't become a statistic. 
Yeah, I'm trying to avoid that. I mean, seeing that I used to have two motorcycles and I'm still walking, the probability of that is a bit lower compared to that. I can run out, mate. I know, but I kind of believe in making my own luck, so I try to... Oh, well, good luck with that. (laughs) Thanks. I try. I'm, I'm a I'm a safe driver. All the stupid stuff I leave for either empty roads or track. It's good to hear. Mostly, though, it's other people, isn't it? That's why right when, when I was driving. Ninety nine percent, it's other people doing something yeah. that you didn't think is even possible to do. Um, I had a person going on the left lane, single lane traffic. There's ten right to the petrol station, like I don't know, four hundred meters away. And I could see that he's going to, he looked in his mirror, I could see on my motorcycle, he's going to do a U-turn from left lane, oh, not even God. turn. And I wanted to overtake him on the right. And the last minute I stopped behind him. And the moment I slowed down, he literally did the he U-turn. He literally slammed it around. I had a guy like that in the ice back in Swansea and he was coming out as a T-junction. T- he was coming out and I was driving down the road. So you imagine he's kind of here. I'm driving down, down the road yeah. here. And he pulled out really quickly to get in front of the motorbike, um, and he skidded on some ice. And his his back left hand wheel, as I'm looking at it from the back of his car, slammed against the curb and snapped his axle. So I could see what he was doing because he was inching forward and braking. You know, he was jerking the car, inching forward and braking, waiting for hit the for the opposite lane to become clear, for him to come out come out quick. So I'd slowed down. And lucky I did, because if I was going the same speed, which is only about 32, 33, yeah. just slightly over the speed limit, he would hit me. He would have judged it wrong and, and hit me. And as he go, his car hit the his back wheel, hit the curb and snapped his axle. And the whole car just slumped down, bang, on the back. Yeah, not great. So, yeah, with that, like, when it's slightly wet, I already took traction control off fully in that car. Um I just floored it on a straight line and the back just went, just which spun. is amazing. It's fun because yeah. you need to understand that, I'm, like you, people listen, that I'm not, a, I don't commute. The only time I go somewhere is because I go to the gym or in surfing or to the shopping. So the car has a lot of fun factor in it. Like if I need a commuter car, I would buy just Audi with four wheel drive system and don't mm-hmm. care about whoever because that car will never go sideways. Yeah, yeah. The Beamer has rear wheel drive. Yeah. And it has enormous engine out front. So the fun factor goes up with the weird, unexpected, like jerking on the back, left and right. But it's really fun going in a roundabout sideways and exiting it sideways. And then suddenly just, I did that as well. It was empty. Um, and I was like, this is amazing. Um, so there's the big fun factor there. But where I was going with this car, though, Behind the gearbox lever, there is two cup holders and very unknown to me design that there's two two cup holders. And then there is like a little, I don't know how to call it, like a wedge. But I could probably fit my AirPod box there. It's that thin. And there's nowhere to put a phone in. I could put it under the... Thingy. Isn't there isn't there uh, a central column where you put slide your phone in just forward of the gear stick? No. It's not. No. Which is weird. And I was like, hmm. I'm pretty sure if someone takes a look at that car, measures that, and makes something a lot more user friendly, where you can put your wallet, your key holder, let's say, mm. and even a phone holder. That would be a lot of happy people in a group that I'm in on Facebook that, as you said, that BMW group. I think they would love that. So, you know, if you need an idea and a model car, like, just give me a shout because technically the I'm imagination... I'm more than happy to have a go. Because it, it's your imagination that stops, mm. you know, the whole project. And I think it's yeah. amazing. Like one of my mates 3D printed um, for my Mini, I needed um adapter for the cone filter, for the air filter. Yeah. So he literally printed like a like a pipe and then spread out and then you put adapter on and I worked like a charm. So I was like, and that works. I love 3D printing. I never got around it, but just saying that there is potential in that car to, you know, get something if you want to sell more stuff. Well, me, come up, come up outside the house. I'm happy to, I'll happily measure it up and have a go. 
can't say they're really good, but I'll happily, I'll happily give it a crack. Give you know, crack I mean, it. It's such a waste of space by the engineers. Like, maybe is it is it? Don't take this the wrong way, but is it there for the luxury model? You know, if you pay like 150 grand, you get this column or whatever. Is it like no, an, an option it. extra? That's what I'm trying to think of. Not a clue. Not a clue. Because it seems weird. Because BMW, German engineering, has always been very functional and everything works and i can't see them forgetting something like a phone holder but it there is a remiss a, yeah but there isn't like you have cards door cards that are massive you yeah, can yeah. fill you can fill like two liter bottle in there probably your wallet and like something else it's like a three tier wow. storage it's amazing but i just think like nowadays with like everyone's got a mobile phone yes it seems like a quite a like a big thing to miss. Yeah. Um, I look it does, into doesn't it? It really does. I mean, something like that is, it, it, yeah, it's not as if you've got X, you know, the the top 10% in the UK or whatever have a phone. It's everybody, and they're all practically everybody. Every, certainly yeah. everybody, friends, family, acquaintances, friends or friends or friends of family, everybody out that you just walk down the road, people are just staring at their phones. People just hooked, yeah. Which hey, is it does like, seem a bit remiss. Yeah, like my car is not the top spec, but it's not a, it's not a bottom spec. It has like red leather, it, it, it's big screen, uh, Harman Kardon. So it's like it's like in the middle when it comes to spec, because there's one with heated seats as well, but there's one that has sunroof, I think, as an extra. Mm-hmm. And I don't know actually what else would it come with. Maybe maybe automatically adjusted seats, but that's like about it. Like yeah. there's not a lot. Like it seems like it's a weird shape in there to have two cup holders and a bit there. Um, it's deep though, so you know. I just thought, why no one designs like so to fill a cup holder? You just need the like a cylindric shape, yeah. and then just mold the key, and so you can just. You can just chuck the key in there so the key doesn't go swinging. That's like, such a simple concept. If you want, I can I can print it out to you for you in, in ABS. So it'll be better than PLA. It'll be harder. It'll be it's a form you of plastic just, larger just than cold stuff. Have, you just may said some sexual preference or I don't know what the <laughs> acronym means. So but, mate, if you tell me what you want, I'll happily have a go at it. Absolutely, because I I've designed that this won't be going out until beginning of next year sort of maybe a third, fourth week of January, I think, because I finished the rest of the podcast now for 2020. Um, yeah. So I can see what I'm printing for mum for a bit for Christmas. So what I've done, a few, I haven't three printed since 2019, the end of 2019, because 2020 happened, the pandemic, everything just sort of came, me not being able to fly anymore, everything happened all at the same time. Yeah. So 2020, I was just working constantly and I was you know, traveling between here and Dagenham a lot and, 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 and everything else. And um, I picked it up again a few weeks ago because I, I, well, a week ago, as I, from now, the 16th of December. Um, so in 2019, I printed mum, I made mum this, 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 this vase because she likes vases and stuff like that. Mm. So I made this vase and I twisted it so the vase wasn't straight, it sort of curled around itself. That's nice. And then I added in little, um, not full diamonds. And yeah. these, there were 500 of these diamonds, 0.2 of a millimetre apart. Oh. And then I printed it out using uh, multicolour PLA. So multicolour, it's the, the PLA is the um, material that you you put into the printer that gives you the shape and gives you the, 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 the finished 3D print. And I did it in multicolour, so it went from orange to yellow to blue to green and it did it seamlessly so it wasn't blocks it was a nice gradient and wow. I gave that to mum and she cried for hours literally she was like it's beautiful it's beautiful and she still got it when I spoke to her the wow. other day and I said how was the vase it's because I thought by now it would have started to maybe unravel slightly she's like it's perfect she said it's still perfect it's a bit faded she says it's not as colorful so I thought right what I'm gonna do because she likes pop and here is that word again What's that smelly stuff you put in a bowl? Pot puree, isn't it? Pot puree? Yeah. And so what I've done is I've modelled her a bowl with big holes around the side of it. So probably about ping pong ball size holes 
around the outside. So there's a set of four holes and then in the middle of those holes, there's another set of holes. So the holes are slightly off center. So it's yeah, infinite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the holes make a zigzag going right through on the ball. And then I've printed and that's printed out of uh, royal blue silk PLA. So it looks, um, what's the word? Shiny. It looks shiny. shiny. Yeah, shiny and really, really shiny. blue because blue is her favorite color. And then in a lighter blue, I've printed out an inner for that bowl. So it's a bowl inside a bowl. And the whole point of that is obviously the holes on the outside of the bowl doesn't make it a very good bowl because anything you put in it, it's just going to fall out. So having this inner, okay. she can put whatever she wants to in the inner. Um, or I suppose, oh, there we go. I've got another use for it. I can blow it up, drill a hole in the top of it, lampshade. Boom. There you go. Bang. There we are. I, I can do that. I'll do that later after this podcast. I don't have a lampshade. Well, there we are. I don't either. I don't like them, but um, I don't have one here. I have one all the way around the house, but I just don't have Same. one in the office. I just don't have one in my office as well. No, no. But I tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll send you one when I print it. I'll print it and I'll send you one and see, see, what, you, see, see what you reckon. Yeah, I'll sort that out. I reckon it's fantastic. Yeah, I think it's I haven't good. seen it so, and I already think it's fantastic. So that's I'm the worst I, customer ever. I'd love to. Uh, I can share my screen on Skype, can't I? Because then I, I can show you. It's not very good from a, a podcast sound perspective, but I, I can. Have I got it here? I think I have. Sorry, there's going to be a lot of noise in this podcast, clicking and stuff. Yeah, there we go. So I, let me see now. Let me give this a shot, right? So if I try and share this, bear in mind this is going to record this. Good God. So let's try that, right? Let's try share. Right, I'm going to give this a go now. Two technology heads. It's our job. Let's see whether or not this is going to work. So I've just shared, hopefully, my screen. And hopefully, yes. you're seeing this load up. Yes. There's a couple of programs I use. I've got uh, Fusion 360, FreeCAD. They're good. But I like Tinkercad. It's a web-based program. I use the book. Oh, it's wow. very basic. Oh, it's very basic. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. So wait for this loading. There's loads of layers in this, which is why it's taking a while to load. So we're viewing the bowl. I'm going to try and do this now for, the, for everybody who's listening as well. So the bowl is currently upside down. So we're looking at the bottom of the bowl as the top. And it says in the top of it, I've inscribed, Merry Christmas, Carolyn, love, Hannah and John. Right. So then you can see the rest of the bowl is then coming down from the bottom because it's upside down. And you can see the holes that I was referencing. There's the bowl. And then I've got the inner for the bowl. This is going to break out now and show you everything that I'm working on. But this is fine. Um, and hopefully it's going to break out and then show you everything I'm working on. It's extremely slow. Yeah. <laughs> so many videos it's to YouTube struggles. as well at the same time. <laughs> I got four uploads going here. <laughs> oh, nice. So there you are. That's the second one, look. So that's the bot. That's the inside. That's very cool. For that bowl. So that's the inner. That's very cool. So that's what that's what that looks like. So that's absolutely fine. But um, yeah, there's a few things. Do you want a, a 60 centimeter Pac-Man? There we are. <laughs> I actually, do you, are you familiar with a pop box? A what box? A pop box. A pod box? No, pop. P-O-P. Pop box. No, I don't know what that is. Sorry, I, I don't know what the hell you saying. Then pod, it sounded like. No, hold on. I'll, I'll show you then. Because that... In... That actually worked, mate. We shared screens. Fantastic. And it's on Skype. Crazy. Um... Yeah, last time I did that on Skype, the whole thing crashed. <laughs> Even the application the shut down, the phone call stopped. It was like, yeah, th- that's the end of it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's done. Right, I'm going to attempt that trickery as well. <laughs> uh, grant access for this application to share. Oh. Oh, here we go. Mac is being overly protective. It's good, man. It's good. Okay, I can't do it because... Oh, I can? I don't know. Tell me if you see it. 
Can you see my screen? I can indeed, yes. So pop that's, in the box. So that's pop. Pops. Oh yes, the pop figures. Yeah, I, I've got I've got pop figures. I didn't know what it is. I admit Did you that. Know? No, no clue. Have I got any to hand? I got some. I got a load of Fallout ones. I've got some heavy metal. Some of the bands I like. Um, they they've come out as pop. Nice, because I didn't know what it is, and I really like the look of it, but I don't really understand what's the purpose of it. It's it's geek culture. So the idea is pop is a it's they're small models caricatures of your favorite things like that. You can see there's Venom and Carnage on the screen you're sharing. There's Venom Carnage, there's Robin, but it, it it's with a caricature twist. So it's not gonna look hundred percent like I've got the alien and the alien's head is colossal. Um, yeah. and his body is really small. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's like a bubble bubble thing. It's like a bobblehead, yeah, apart from his head doesn't move. Oh, so actually, no, sometimes they turn left and right. But um, mm -hmm. mostly it's just stationary um, silicon or, or plastic figure. Yeah, yeah. Can you print that stuff? Yeah, they. I can't do the pop ones. They. I believe there was, there was a website I found a few years back where you could buy originally licensed pops for 3D printing, but I don't know if that, if that is still a thing. But there are remixes of them where people have sort yeah. of made their own. So I could print those. I'm not I'm not printing anybody else's design. I'm not passing anybody else's design off as my own. And I'm certainly not printing any and selling any licensed stuff. Um, yeah, no, that makes total sense. That makes total you know, sense. Because at the end of the day, this is I'm trying to hone my skills as a modeler. I'm trying to, you know, broaden my sort of horizons. Um, yeah. At the same time, but you know, I, I've seen so many people. Um, there was this guy like I came across on eBay the other the other I say the other day it was a couple of days ago because I was trying to figure out whether or not this was viable because I've got so many printers here, but running them all they just, don't use that yeah. much electricity. I was trying to look at what other people were selling to see how viable it was, and I found it may have been the same guy, but then the the usernames he was using weren't roughly the same. Do you know what I mean? If you're going to be using a username to publish your models on a 3D site, say Thingiverse, for argument's sake, where people can go on and take off anything that, you know, they can elaborate on your models and they can just print them out straight. Excuse yeah. me. Um, whenever I've made up a username, yes, yeah, sometimes they've, they've altered, but they've pretty much been in the same sort of ballpark thing, you know? Mm. Um, and I, I got the feeling that this guy was passing off somebody else's models and it really bloody infuriated me because what you've just seen doesn't look like much but that little bowl took me so long to make and then to make sure that the the holes were the right centimeters from the top and then the right millimeters yeah. from either side and i hate the idea if somebody wants to take one of my things and make it and make it from a digital thing into a physical thing fine if they want to make money on it i've got a big problem on that if it if they've remixed it to the point where it doesn't it no longer looks like my thing, then fine. If they've put yeah. five to ten, twenty hours into it and remodeled it, I've got no problem. But when somebody blatantly goes on to Thingiverse and goes download and then sells that then sells, for 15, 20, well. 30 quid, it, that bloody infuriates me. <laughs> yeah, is there like any creative commons or like a licensing base around that or, or is it well, like there is, free for all? It's, it's, all of it is Creative Commons, but you can choose. Like on mine, it's Creative Commons, non-commercial. So you can sell it, but you can print it for your own good. Yes. I don't mind. If anybody wants to print my, my drones I've made or the RC cars I've made or the little little figures for Dungeons & Dragons I've made, which I've got none close to me. There's a few up there um, yeah. up on my shelf. But if anybody wants to print them, feel free. Print. Have at them, you know? Have fun, enjoy it. I, I, I got sent. Um, I've made these little Dungeons and Dragons, uh, and when I had a resin printer, I used to print them out. Uh, there were five of them, and they're it, it just weird. In my sculpting program, I just made weird monsters because it's Dungeons and Dragons, isn't it? You know. Yeah. And um, and I just made these five weird monsters, and um, and I did them at the beginning of 2019. And at the end of 2019, I had a guy email me. 
and said, just what, thought you'd want to see what we're using your models for, which I thought was lovely. That's and he's amazing. sitting around with five of his mates and they're sitting around and my models they're playing with. That's and amazing. While playing D and D, and I was like, mate, that that hit me in the field. That makes you know what I mean? it that was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's trained in the fields that. Yeah. It's nice. Like, there's a lot of good people out there. There's always the one bad egg who tries to monetize and stuff. Yeah. And I don't mind if somebody gets in touch with me and says, hey, look, I'm going to sell this. What do you reckon? Then let's have a chat. You can buy the STL off me, the image off me. And then that's all I require. Chuck me 20, 30 quid for my time. And then, and then you, you can. Do the- yeah. If you want to make, if you want to become a millionaire off off that, but you will. But if you want to, or at least try, then you can do it. You're insane. Exactly. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. Imagine being a millionaire it, selling know. shit on eBay. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, it's. I, I just. I. I saw that one eBay listing, and I thought I was scrolling through it, and I could literally. I typed in what the title was on eBay on Thingiverse, and I found it almost immediately. I think it was four or five images down yeah and i was like hang on is this the same guy his names are different and i mean totally different and i was like well okay maybe it's the same guy maybe it's just maybe that's ebay account older longer or whatever yeah. and then looking at the writing on thingiverse and looking at the writing on ebay it wasn't the same guy you know yeah did you let him know I, I haven't. I don't really know what to do. I don't want to be that. Just let him know. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? You don't know what to do? Like. I didn't know what because, to do because... How would you feel when someone would sell your stuff and I would know? I just said, I, 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 I'd be livid. I'd be livid. I think exactly. I, I would definitely want to know. Yeah, you make a good That's, point. Like, if you want to know, I'm pretty sure that guy wants to know as well. Yeah. Just tell him. Because yeah. it sucks. Someone's stealing his work. It does. It does. It's not about the money that it's about someone took his idea and monetized it without him yeah. giving him any credit. Yeah. Um which like, yeah. It's they yeah, I would I would definitely want to know. Yeah. I'll be that guy. You make a very good point, mate. You make a very good point. I should have I should have done it already, I just hadn't. I just thought to myself, oh well I I, I was conflicted, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, that happens, but just refer to yourself, like how would you feel with someone? And then suddenly it's usually like quite. Oh, I can't say that because I'd be going from Noda. <laughs> I, I would be yeah. livid. livid. Okay, think about me thinking about what you would, that would probably filter that. <laughs> <didn't it? laughs> what I mean, would Jacob same, think about me? <laughs> it's the same on YouTube. I, there's a, on your YouTube creator studio, there's a, a copyright section where you can go on there and see if anybody else has taken your videos. And I, I have filed for other people to take my videos down. There's one of my videos, which is a Canon uh, 4000D camera. And I did an unboxing and I did a few other videos after that of me using the camera. And I still got it here. I think it's, it's a great camera. It's not my, my go-to, but it, it's still here. And somebody had taken my video, they downloaded it from YouTube and they'd removed my intro and outro, stuck in their own intro and outro, but it's me speaking. Hi. <laughs> and to be fair, my accent isn't sort of run of the mill. It's not as strong as it used to be, but it's still Welsh, you know. Yeah. And when you look at 984 of my YouTube videos, I've got on that one channel. I've got me speaking. <laughs> yeah, the give. It's a dead giveaway. Then, isn't it? Yeah, it is a bit. Yeah, I, and Someone I, I, did I got pretty put... insensitive about that. Someone didn't put a lot of effort in that. But what do people? People and, don't uh, listen. Unless they have more views than you do, then I'll start reconsidering things. If someone <laughs> nicked your video <laughs> and <laughs> and they got like three million views, and you're like, I'm <laughs> gonna finish this career because there's no point. Someone stole my no, video. They go. I I think with me, I think it was it was more for the fact that I remember how long it took me to make that video, and it's only a it's only like a 13 minute video, but I scripted it. it. Takes I ages. thought about what I was gonna say. I positioned the cameras. Then the sun moved. Then I couldn't use my light because the light as I was sitting behind me here and I'm hunched over it so then I had to buy two LED ring lights and set them and wait for them to, to arrive and then set them offset it for my camera to look down effort. It and always, it takes yeah I was going to say about our mutual friend Nick who does yeah. that stuff for a living yeah. and a short material 18 minutes that is a whole day of filming Yeah, easy exactly. um, we always see the end 
result rather than all the hard work that goes into Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I think that's why I got so incensed is because I remember scripting it. I remember sitting down using the camera and then thinking to myself, how did I feel? What the camera, what do the photos look like? Can I put the photos side by side next to my big EOS, uh, my EOS M and see what they're like in comparison, you know? And then this guy yeah. just downloaded it and whacked it on his channel and kind of gone, oh, well, I'll, I'll get 100 views on that. Oh, if you're stealing people's videos, fuck you. That's all yeah. for sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It really annoyed me, that did. <laughs> I can tell. You're still agitated. And that was two years ago. And I, I'm not a guy that holds on to grudges and things like that. I just, I had an email. No, one, but you know your value. And someone just takes it. It's like, who entitled you to take things that's not yours? You know yeah. what I mean? And then try to cash it on. I think the like, thing is, everything on that channel, on JD Quad, I ran on a shoestring for years. I bought everything. I saved up for the cameras, for the lot. And I, I ran it on a shoestring. And there are times where it looks like it is running on a shoestring. But towards the end yeah. of when I was doing the RC stuff, um, all of it was 4K. Cool. What's that? That was cool, though, because I've seen the when you were flying the quadcopters. Oh, I loved it, mate. Yeah. It's a shame I can't it's do it cool. now. Why not? Law. One, I got kicked out of my field. So Law is just an advisory. Oh, mate, come on. No, it, literally, when people are getting done, I mean, I know the FAA is American, it's not UK, but people in America have been done for flying illegally. And how stupid would I be? Been done. Fined. Taking the court. Fined the what? thousands of dollars for flying over people i mean this law people are cracking down on big time this isn't this isn't in england though in england people are cracking down not to the same extent but they are making examples of people um they are making which which unfortunately in my field my field was quite small and it's the only place i could we, you know where i live right so yeah. don't, don't say it on here but uh, i know where you live <laughs> but it's the only place around here that I, that I could fly you know legally yeah. when the new laws came in the field is shorter and smaller than the minimum uh, the minimum uh, distance I have to be away from people and or houses to fly what's the law then like do you have a license now well you know you've all you've, you've got to do a little test the test is nothing it's, a, it's about Name, 50, 20 questions date of birth that's it no, it's kind of how far are you going to be to fly away from, you know, to, to fly. I've, I've just fucked that up. Uh, <laughs> out of field. <laughs> what That's distance have you got to be away from people? What's the distance away from houses? What's the maximum height limit? And, and things like that. Um, it's it's quite simple to pass. It pass. Oh, I can't even say pass. They just want to make sure that you're sort of compass mentis. You know, you're not just grabbing a, a £1,000 sort of big man toy and just you know thrusting it into somebody's head like people were doing you know around yeah. the country people were flying them into people and uh, and stuff like that and chasing there was a, a person it sounds quite funny but it's not somebody was chased by a drone an old woman was chased out of a park when a drone flew after a woman and actually physically chased her out of the park you know um it's people like that that cause these laws to come in and it's because of these laws i can now no longer fly that's why I changed the channel to a gaming yeah. channel. Because then there's like Japanese police has drones with nets that they catch the rogue yeah. drones. Well, the thing is, the, the police can do it, mate. Same as in America, I think it's America, is it America? That they have um, defibrillator drones. So if yeah. they know that they can't get an ambulance with a defibrillator to a person who's lying on the floor, if there's another emergency services person there, then they'll fly a drone in with a, defib with a defibrillator to. You know, uh, and then whoever's there, the emergency personnel is there, can use it on the person. Isn't the um, Amazon was trialing delivery by the drones. Oh, they were trialing it, mate. But they, I mean, as much as I'd love to see that happen, they had proper pie in the sky visions. They did. Their their idea was that the drones would land on top of reconfigured, um, not reconfigured, remodeled, reworked uh, street lamps to charge. Now, these drones are big. You're not talking sort of DJI Mavic Mini or, you know, Inspire. Yeah. You're talking big rigs. These are huge. 
I mean, they, they've got to carry parcels like 20, 30 miles. You know, these are proper. And the, not only that, they've got the battery power to do it. Yeah. So they have to set up signal uh, signal boosters or whatever, replicators, for a start. Then they would land on top of street lamps and they would charge on top of street lamps. I mean, you can imagine a street lamp, a standard British street lamp, right? It's about 20 foot, is it, roughly? About 20 foot, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. About the height of a house. And it's got mm. a tiny curve over the top of it, probably about three foot, with a bulb in it. <laughs> yeah. You'd have to remodel. And look how many street lamps there are, right, in the UK, just on a standard road. If you look down my road, I can probably count about 15 street lamps. So how many yeah. of those are you going to reconfigure for an Amazon? Plus, not just that, the amount of idiots that would throw shit at them or try to climb the lamppost to get Yeah, we learned that. We can't have nice things, right? Like, can't we just have can't nice have things. nice things. Yeah. No. We are in our own way of the, the like future development, I think. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I, I think they stopped it, didn't they? I think that they did try it. Yeah, they were successful. Stopped, yeah. But I think they, they did pull the plug. I'm always fascinated by projects that go at plug pulls. Like there was Project Ara with like a modular idea of a phone that was great, then it just stopped. I remember that, yeah, where you just, yeah. if you want a new upgrade in your phone, you just snap off the old camera and snap on a new camera. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. It's amazing. But it died. Um, then it was. Do you remember called... the Ubuntu phone? There was a, dex a desktop, yeah, you'd dock it, yeah. and you'd have yeah, a full just... desktop experience, but it was, your, it was your phone. It was in the phone, yeah, but it wasn't yeah. working properly. It was not working very well. It was, um, it was still... a great idea, though. Great idea, because now we have, like, Apple mirroring and Android mirroring, where you can just sit in front of the telly, bang, and project it. Like, yeah, so many projects that, like, uh, such a good, like, remember Nokia Engage? The, Mate, game the Engage? Were... Literally, there was two things I coveted in this world when I was around about that age. A Game Boy Color yes. and then a Nokia N-Gage. Because I had Game a standard Color. Game Boy, but I wanted Game the Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and I wanted an N-Gage. Because you could answer your phone, text people, and then play Sonic. I mean, I didn't see technology get any better than that. I had no idea. I did not foresee iPhones or anything like that becoming a thing. I saw a purpose-built game, like a purpose-built game console with a phone built inside it. That's what yes, I saw. the Switch. Nintendo Switch is almost yeah. there, right? Almost. But a fantastic device. So I have it, not had it. I have PS5, and it's amazing as well. Um, but there's many people in this country that can't get a PS5. Sorry, <laughs> I missed the memo. I missed the memo when it became my problem. Wow. Well, I got nothing to say to that other than you're a cunt. No, I agree with that. Uh, listen, listen, there was a lot of effort put into finding and trying to pay and go through a queue in Argos How on the shop. How did you get out of, out of curiosity? So I have an app called Hot Stock. Okay, sounds very dodgy. Yeah, so that app has a few products there, but one of them is PlayStation 5, and it lists all the shops available in the UK that potentially sell PS5. So if I get on hot stock, if something comes up, will you take your brand new fast beamer and get me PS5? No problem. If I if if you want me to find your PlayStation, not a problem. I managed to find one in 12 hours. Really? Yeah, and apparently it was the one and only in Wales that was delivered to Argos, and I got it. Wow, well done, mate. Yeah. I would take my hat off to you, but I haven't got very one. I, I have. I could take it off on myself, but that would be a bit cocky. Be Everyone knows I do it, so I just do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got a PlayStation, and like it took a bit of faff because they they have drops. They do so you set the app, and then you set the app of a shop you want to buy in. So when the alert pings, you go yes, and then it adds it to a basket and checks you out in, in Argos app. So then all you have to do is pay. So I paid twice. One transaction failed. The other one failed, but I get a text. Oh. Thanks for the purchase. I was like, did I just? I think I did. And then I got an email, like, please pick it up tomorrow, like, before, like, 9 p.m. I was like, game on. I got a PS5. 
<laughs> so did you actually pay? Because I've got a story quite similar to that. About, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I bought an iPad many years ago, and I'm not going to say the shop, right? But I bought an iPad many years ago, going probably back about three, three years ago now, so not that many. Yeah. I ordered one, one brand new iPad with one brand new case. Two iPads turn up in two separate deliveries with two cases, the same I altered, the uh, same that I ordered. Yeah. I can't speak, right? I'm getting tired now. That's what I'm fucking up my words. That's my excuse that's, anyway. That's fair enough. And um, so anyway, I ring up the company and say, you've sent me two. And I only ordered one. And I checked my email. Yeah. And the person on the phone is probably the rudest person they've ever spoken to. They're like, yeah, really? I said, yeah, I've only ordered one. I said, can you check to make sure that you, you've only dispatched one, not two? If you've dispatched two, I'll send you this one back. And they went, yeah. And then some talking to somebody else in the distance. And I'm thinking, oh, they're talking about this transaction. No, not at all. All I heard, handles over the, the phone, but not very well. Are you going down there as well? Yeah, I'm going down there. Are you? Are you down that pub? I'll meet you down there. Let me just get rid of this oh, house. I'll be down there now in five minutes. So I hung up. I thought, oh, fuck wow. you. Yeah, yeah. Just keep an iPad then. So, so I tried time. again. A friend of yeah. mine I knew worked for the company at the time, and I got in touch and said, mate, I've got two. He never got back in touch with me. I said, mate, can you? I've tried to get rid you of this don't twice. Don't want your iPad back. No. Just so keep I kept it. Yeah. It's like one guy on Reddit today got sent 10 copies of Civilization 5 for Xbox. Shit. He got back to Amazon like, yo, you sent me 10 copies. I wanted one. He's like, yeah, just keep it. <laughs> All right, then. So Thanks very much. What are you going to do with 10 copies of Civilization? Eh? Well, like, when you scratch that one disc, you've got another four, right? No, someone said, oh, that's just pure Reddit. Someone said to wear the same clothes, and every time he goes to game or CEX, to trade it in. Trade it in, yeah. Trade, trade it in, off but, it. no, but dress the same every day and go to the same person. Yeah, every, yeah, I see. Yeah, kind of like time. Blind Dog Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same time, same same store, same same address, same yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be brilliant. Friday is like, comes in, like, is this Friday? Like, imagine the mindfuck that someone has. The same guy from four days same walking time. in. Four, yeah. no, nine days because you have 10 copies so you have oh four, sorry 10 copies of course yeah so five. five days same time same clothes like same everything <laughs> same line i want to trade this in it's like i would be like what is going on like Amazing, that's a mate. long-term setup isn't it good god wow <laughs> Yeah, 10 copies things like that do happen don't they it's very rare it never the ipad is the first time yeah, but the first time it ever happened. It's never happened before and yeah. it never happened since. And I tried, I tried my damnedest Generally to true. give it back. Tried on two separate off. occasions. And, you know, the first person called me an arsehole when he thought he had his hand over the phone. <laughs> and my mate, the person who used to work for the company at the same time, never got back in touch. So I was like, oh, well, sod it then. And I, I okay. tried on message, on Facebook message, on text message. Mate, any idea? Okay. Have you got anything? Maybe about three or four times after that, I thought, oh, bollocks to it. I saw he was reading the message. I just thought, oh, oh, yeah. Maybe it's not meant to be. Maybe you kept the iPad. Well, yeah, yeah, we still got them. It's still working great. Mine's up there. Hannah's got hers in her room. Perfect. Yeah. What else do you need? I know what you need. You need sleep. I do. I've started getting really tired the last 10 minutes. I've really started to drop. I'm yeah. going to have uh, I'm gonna have a couple of whiskeys. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to re recalibrate this printer to my yeah. last years. And then I'm going to go to bed, then, I think. <laughs> 